Hello everyone, welcome back, here is Van Amsen. Today we are going to tackle a very interesting uh, problem from uh, lead code, uh, problem 664, the strange printer. So this task is sure to challenge your problem solving skills, uh, but don't worry, we are going to unravel it step by step. So uh, let's get cracking. Uh, let's first uh, understand the problem. We are dealing with an uh, eccentric printer with two specific properties. First, it can only print a sequence of uh, characters, same characters each time. And second, it has the freedom to start and end printing uh, at any point, overlapping the original existing characters. And our quest is to figure out the minimum number of turns the printer needs to print given uh, string. So uh, let's see uh, some examples. Uh, so. We have a string, for example, uh, AAA. So as you can see, and uh, output should be two. And this is because we can print uh, three times A and then three times B. And uh, in case of uh, second case, it's also really interesting because we will use it in our dynamic programming. Uh, we can print three times A and then over print uh, letter B. So A become B. So here is one turn and here is second turn. And here we just print uh, three and uh, here three. So uh, both uh, cases need to return uh, two. So now we understand the uh, task. So you might uh, feel overwhelmed at first, but uh, in closer inspection reveals that this problem is a perfect candidate. Yes. I mentioned it before, dynamic programming. Why so? The printer's uh, behavior suggests that we can split our problem into smaller, more digestible subproblems, uh, substrings of the input to solve the problem for the entire string. So uh, the first step in our journey involves creating a dynamic programming DP table. So each cell in the table uh, will be DPIJ and uh, will represent the minimum number of turns the printer needs to print the substring from i to j. And uh, it's like a map guiding us to our treasure. So we will initialize our adventure by filling the diagonal of the DP table uh, with ones. Why so? Because the printer, no matter how strange, only needs a single turn to print a single character. For example, uh, if we have string A, B, C, the printer can print A, B, or C in one turn each. Hence, the diagonal of our DP uh, table representing substrings of len one is uh, will be filled with uh, ones because uh, it consists of one turn each. And also, uh, printing A, B, C will take three turns. So next, we will populate the uh, DP table using a bottom-up approach. So for every uh, I from uh, N minus one to zero and J from uh, I plus one to uh, N, uh, we set DP uh, IJ to DP IJ minus one plus one. And this portrays the scenario where we print the substring from i to j minus one. And first, uh, and then print the character at j separately. So uh, let's imagine we have, yeah, uh, a, b, c. Uh, so the printer can print a, B in two turns, and then C in one turn, giving uh, basically three. Uh, so uh, in three turn, making a total three turns. So, but there is a twist in the tail. We might be able to print the substring from uh, I to J uh, in fewer turns uh, if there are overlapping uh, characters. So uh, that's where our ally key so we will have also the key value uh, 
uh, into a picture. So we introduce key to divide the substring from i to j. So key will be here in the middle and uh, we will transform it from i to key and then from key to uh, j and uh, uh, into two parts. So the left part uh, will be from i to key, so i to a key, and right part will be from, yeah, basically because we start uh, from key plus one, so here's uh, space, <laughs> so not to overlap this, to uh, j. And for each key from uh, i to j, uh, if s key, so we will have some s uh, key, uh, is the same as sj, so let's write sj, uh, we can print the substring from i to k first, and then print the character at j, which will also cover the uh, s key. So this is uh, a printing, for example, aa in one turn, and then b in another turn. So imagine we have a string of a, b, a. So how we can print it? So uh, this is a case mentioned also previously. We will have triple A uh, and here we will have our key and because uh, we can consider it as I to the key, we will overprint this with B and then we will have uh, key plus one to J. So like this. And uh, yeah, it will take just two turns and not three, making a total of uh, our DP uh, different than previously. So consequently, we will update uh, our uh, DP IJ, so DP of IJ, uh, uh, to be the minimum of the current value. And so, yeah, we will have uh, our uh, transition function and it will be minimum of the current and also yeah i don't have space so let's write uh, here and uh, the dp of i p plus dp p plus one as mentioned here uh, j minus one so because we have the j, or uh, simply uh, it will be, uh, yeah, d, p, i, k, uh, if key is basically, so yeah, if key plus one is greater than j minus one. So, uh, yeah, so once our dp table is filled uh, to the uh, full, uh, we find out the answer waiting uh, at our position of dp uh, 0 and minus 1. And this cell uh, whispers to us the minimum number of turns needed to print the entire uh, string. And yes. So now if we understand the task, let's implement it. So n will be len of s and dp will be 0 times n for in range of n and then for i in range n minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, dp i i will be 1 as mentioned before so it's a diagonal column and for j in range i plus 1 to the n and our dp ij will be dp of ij minus one plus one because it's one turn. And otherwise for key in range i uh, j, so as mentioned, uh, it's a middle element that's split overlapping uh, characters. So if s key equals s uh, j, so it's the case, for example, where a key was a b, 
and J was also B, so we overprinted. Uh, DP IJ will be minimum of DP IJ, so it's our current uh, DP we have, and DP I key plus DP of I key plus one and J minus one. And if key uh, plus one is less than J minus one, and else it will be uh, zero. And finally, we return DP of zero and N minus uh, one. So it's uh, over printing and number of operation for whole string. So let's run to see uh, if I didn't make any mistake. Yeah, all looking good. So here is two uh, operation and here we have two also with over printing. So over printing work uh, perfect. Uh, okay, so let's submit it for unsynthesized cases as well. Uh, I think it will pass, but yes. So. I have pre uh, also solved it uh, previously in other languages. Uh, so uh, we have uh, solved it and our implementation beat 78% with respect to runtime, so it's quite good. And also 66% with respect to uh, memory. I think, yeah, C sharp was 100%. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> even even better, but uh, the logic is quite, quite the same. So, and yeah, we have uh, solved it. So now uh, that we have uh, forged our uh, solution and implemented uh, and also put uh, into the test for unsynthesized cases, uh, everything work. So uh, there you have it. Our solution stands uh, victorious, passing the test uh, with uh, all uh, test cases, even unseen one. So the key lesson from this problem is the power of dynamic programming, which help us break down complex problem into a smaller digestible uh, chunks. And that brings us to the end of this uh, coding adventure. If you found this video insightful, uh, show uh, some love by hitting the like button and subscribe for more engaging uh, coding content, uh, tutorials, and much more. And until next time, keep practicing, keep coding, See you next time.